So I hope you enjoyed the film. Now what we need to talk about is what is zero waste in the context of your situation. Uh, let's bring it back to earth. Um, so you'll be relieved to know that zero waste does not mean that you're never going to use a landfill again. Um, I helped form an organization called the Zero Waste International Alliance uh, over 10 years ago with about 12 countries represented and we all talked about this situation of getting to absolute zero and that's actually maybe impossible we don't know that's not the point the point of zero waste is it's a journey it's not a destination it is a policy where as you make your decisions you're getting closer or further from the zero waste goal with every decision you make so the key idea here is we're always going to have what we call discards when you're done with something it's going to be put into a bin and it's going to go somewhere traditionally that's been what we call waste. It goes into a trash bin. It goes to a landfill. Um, zero waste community planning adds to that story. So there's three words here, three key words in the new story. What is waste? What is zero waste? And what is residue? And I'll walk through each of those briefly. You know what waste is. We all know what waste is. It's the mixed up garbage in your trash can, okay? And the key idea behind that is nobody wants that stuff. And that's why it gets buried and that's why it gets burned because there's no market value to mix waste like that. So the second question is what is zero waste? Zero waste is sorted resources out of that mixed waste. And a lot of people want that stuff. In fact, there's real market value in the sorted mixed trash. I personally have marketed nearly a million tons in my career of resources and I've been paid for every penny by industry not because they're green but because it's an economic resource and feedstock for the whole economic system. And this truism, which has been true for 30 years, is getting truer every year. The markets for recyclables are getting stronger as we go forward. The value of this stuff has increased 300% in the last 15 or 20 years, and it's just going to keep going. So waste is mixed trash. Zero waste is sorted discards. And the third, world, resi third word, residues, that's the stuff that even if you sorted it out, there's no market. What does that include? Baby diapers, painted wood, treated wood. You have quite a bit of that in the islands. Uh, radioactive material. These are things that even if you sort them out, there's no market value to them. So that's why in um, the Zero Waste International Community, we are saying that a Zero Waste Community will be a 90% at a 90% recycling rate with probably 10% residue, no matter how good you are at this point. So that was the first of six points. What is waste? What is zero waste? My second point is that if you're going to expand the story of what you're doing with waste, adding a zero waste system to the island, now you're going to have two systems for handling your discards. One of them is going to be a traditional waste system. The other is going to be a zero waste system. Each of those is going to have a different set of costs. And now we know from experience around the world, when you're handling waste, you, you cannot just count the financial cost of our options. We now know that there are serious environmental impacts from how we handle our waste, and there are significant social impacts on how we handle our waste. So I want to take just a minute so that you, we can discuss the three different ways of measuring cost for your two different systems on the island for handling your discards. Under your waste system, your mixed waste system, you are going to have a landfill. I understand you have a new landfill GBB's been working on. I greatly respect their work. And so you, you now have, from an economic perspective, something that is a pure cost because the market's not going to pay you for it. So you're paying now to put it, in the, put it in the ground. Just like everyone else who has a landfill. That's the way it goes. The environmental cost of landfills, um, EPA's on record is saying, there's never been a landfill built that won't leak, and even GBB knows that. Uh, so we know that eventually 
uh, material in a landfill will find groundwater. We also know that as things are degrading in the landfill, they create air emissions. So from an environmental perspective, we have got a cost, and it is air emissions, air pollution, and water pollution. And then from a social perspective, we know we have two things happening with the social side. One is a NIMBY factor. Nobody wants a landfill in their backyard for various reasons. Uh, so there's an environmental justice issue of who gets the landfill in their backyard. Um, but more interesting is there's jobs, and that's a positive. We all need jobs. We need jobs we can't export. And landfill will provide, rule of thumb is, one job for every 10,000 tons that goes in the landfill. So that's your waste system. Now let's talk about your zero waste system. Zero waste system on the financial cost side is actually going to produce revenue and value. In fact, some materials are so valuable that they are a profitable business activity in many metals. Paper, plastic, and glass are increasing as well. So now instead of 100% cost, we now have a much less cost and we have revenue. On the environmental and social side, on the environmental side, since we are preventing air emissions and preventing water emissions, uh, we're getting significant environmental benefit uh, when we recover and recycle and compost materials. It's hard to quantify exactly what that benefit is, but we know it exists. When you keep materials in the e local economy, they will increase their value in many different ways. And finally, social side, we were talking about jobs. Um, in the zero waste economy, it's been estimated that instead of one job for every 10,000 tons, we get 10 times as many jobs. 10 jobs for every 10,000 tons. And these are good jobs you can't export. Um, so it's important for all of us to understand that your two discard management systems are going to have two sets of costs, financial, environmental, and social. So now moving on to the third point, we know what zero waste is. We know how to measure the cost of a zero waste system versus a traditional waste system. Um, so now, um, what, what does a zero waste path forward look like for Guam? And you'll be relieved to know that it's nothing that you haven't already been exposed to. It's just a little bit bigger. Uh, it's the three R's, reduce, reuse, recycle. And um, now don't fall asleep because you've heard this before because I am going to expand the concept of the three R's for you. But essentially that's still the same frame and the, still the same approach that everyone will take. So first you have reduce, reuse, recycle. Reduce means preventing waste before it even starts. And the way you can think about this is that you've got a bunch of material that is coming into your island, you're importing almost everything, and there is a waste stream or a discard stream that flows through Guam. Um, you have, every stream has an upstream and a downstream. And so we're going to add a midstream to that analogy. So upstream, midstream, downstream. Upstream is reduce, midstream is reuse, downstream is recycle. Upstream, let's talk about that first. So how do you reduce waste before it happens? Well, there's many ways to do it. Probably the key way for you to begin your discussions today and focus on immediately is, is how you're spending public dollars. Environmental purchasing. This is a very key concept. We've seen great progress in how governments contract out for goods and services the last 10 years. There are a great many examples around the world. Think of the acronym EPP, Environmental Purchasing Policy. And what you're going to do is you're going to buy, in your RFPs, non-toxic services and goods that are recyclable, compostable, or reusable. It's that simple. There's plenty of good documentation around about guiding you forward on that. So that's your, that's your primary step in the upstream waste reduction world. Not too tough. The second thing is reuse and repair. That's midstream. What that says is once you have your products circulating on island and being of economic value to people, keep them there. Keep them moving. Create jobs through, re, through reuse and repair. The thrift store culture. Um, this is the greenest thing you can do uh, as an individual or a business is buy things that are already made, buy used. 
And finally, downstream, recycle. That's the part we all know the best. Uh, recycle, compost. Um, so I, I think the path looks like something you've already seen. There's nothing dramatically new to this. Um, but it's important that we expand the concept of upstream and midstream and not just focus on downstream recycling. We really, zero waste brings us full circle to waste reduction first uh, before we get to recycling. So in summary, reduce, reuse, recycle is still the mantra and just make sure that everyone starts buying recyclable, compostable, non-toxic goods and services.